Hey everyone, welcome to the Alternates, a basketball show for the others where we like to showcase independent music and discuss all things basketball. We've got a really fun show lined up today. We have a new face in the studio who will be introduced shortly, but you have heard this person on the show before. Very exciting. We're going to be checking out the headliners. We're going to be uh, taking a visit at the altar of the basketball gods and uh, begging for things at this point in the season. We're going to be playing three pack. And of course, it's time for bet brains. We're going to be hitting the casino and putting some money down. We got all that and more coming up right after this song, which is Softer Science by Dangers off their 2016 The Bend and the Break LP on Top Shelf Records. We'll be right back. What is up, y'all? Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. We, of course, are the alternates. I am your host, Brian Cullen. And with me today, joined by a very special guest, the vocalist of the band you just heard, Dangers, owner of the Gym Gate 14, and owner and operator of Cultural Materials, Alfred Brown the Fourth. That's me. Al, welcome me. to the alternates. Thank you, my friend. I have been waiting uh, in the wings uh, as an alternate, uh, <laughs> and now I get the main stage. Um, really, really excited to be here. Talk, uh, talk some shop. Talk some b-ball. Talk strangely in tangential ways. I'm sure music is uh, influencing this whole entire episode as well. Absolutely. I uh, hope your ears are all right out there after that catter wall. Uh, <laughs> very excited to uh, take the seat, uh, Clayton. Left it a little like slimy. Uh, I'm gonna have to dust this thing down a little bit, but uh, excited to be here. Uh, I've watched most of the episodes, so uh, you out there, you internet nerds. Uh, I'm, I hope you guys. They probably don't think I know anything about basketball. This is gonna be an interesting day. You It'll know? be fun. Most It'll people fun. don't think you know. You don't know the people. There's who are, the other side of that where they think I know anything <laughs> about basketball. So don't worry about Closet it. Closet ball heads. Yeah, we're, okay. we're gonna balance each other out okay. here. Uh, before we get into the meat of the show here, so to speak, just want to take a quick second and ask you to subscribe to the show and channel on YouTube wherever you're getting your podcast. Subscribe there. Like the video if you're catching the video. Uh, go ahead and leave us a rating and review if your podcast has that option. Those kind of things really, really do go a long way in helping other. people people just like you, the other alts out in the world, find the show. Um, if you are catching us, I mean, look, all that stuff aside, more important, share it, right? Like this is a community. Let's share the show. You know somebody who might enjoy it. Send it them their way. It helps us. It helps you. It helps them. It's it's a beautiful symbiosis of yeah. support here that I'm trying to DIY get going. symbiosis, you know? It's a digital do it yourself. You exactly. Know? Exactly. Uh, if you want to get a hold of the show, you can do so by leaving a comment in the video section. You can email us the alternate hoop at gmail.com or you can follow us on TikTok at the alternates MBA. Al, how the hell are you? Oh, yeah. you know, uh, been been a long three years. We've all been going. I don't even know where we're at anymore. Time doesn't exist. Time anymore. doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I'm doing very well. Uh, turned 39 years young yesterday. Happy birthday. Um, 
I feel very, very adamant that this is this is the year, right? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if that pans out. But uh, I've decided that from here on out, I'm going to start counting backwards. Uh, I mean, are we tracking like like we just said these kind of two or whatever it is years I, don't exist? Like it's it's very much like you do. Are you familiar with um, like an addiction? They say when somebody gets sober they basically start from where they were before you, they you just started have, You using. just have a gap. You just It's almost like amnesia. You just pull it yeah, out. Yeah, so like if I was 16, <laughs> started abusing substances, got sober at 23, at 23, I'm actually starting at 16 You're again. 16 again. So I feel like we're still kind of there. The COVID has been that for all of us. I, I feel as though, yeah, it's it's just interesting. That I, I was thinking about this in terms of, of the season for basketball as well. And some of the, like, just refer, like who won last year right i was like who i lived the other day i was like wait <laughs> oh yeah the bucks won last year yeah. you know and so uh it's just a really interesting time where it, it stretches and bends uh i think i'm excited right now just as things knock on wood open up band's gonna be doing some new things i'll tell you at the end of this Great. and uh you know just excited about your own personal lives yeah. kind of mirroring hopefully what's happening out in the world which is like hopefully we're coming out of this hope we're opening up hopefully we get to just start being human beings like we want to be again sure so this this is my first day of 39 and i am this is a, a, a planting a flag in the ground and i'm moving forward with it so let's keep doing that no better way to do that than on the alternates let's do it all right <laughs> let's get into our first segment which is headliners headliners so i've got a few headliners here uh, i might just grab that audio clip and play that every time we start this headliners. Segment moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna start in San Antonio. So as the season is coming to a close here, the regular season, I can see it in the rearview mirror. <laughs> they clinch a playoffs or a play in spot. There yes. was one up for grabs in the West. It was the last one. And they clinched that. And in doing so, they have officially eliminated the Lakers play in and playoff hopes. Dun, dun, dun. So with this headline, I kind of have a two parter for okay. you. Okay. Part one. What does this mean? for the Spurs? Is there hope there? Do they want to be there? Yeah, it, it's a tough situation, right? Because you got to try now. You, you, you got to make an effort. Yeah. Uh, I think there might be a little bit of a schism between front office and Pop. I always think about this mm. whenever I think about the Spurs where Pop is a system man. He does not care what players are before him, I think. It just, you give me XYZ players, I'm going to make sure that we win, right? Yeah. So for him, this corroborates. It's like, look, my system works. We're going to keep doing as best we can. We're going to try, work our asses off, run the system, and the system will, will see you through to a certain extent. Uh, but the other side of the coin is, you know, a front office is like, well, now we got a worse lottery spot. And, we gotta, <laughs> and how far you go, uh, there's definitely a ceiling on how far they can go, right? Okay. But I do think you've got youth on your side. Yeah. A lot of players who haven't been even in this situation once. Sure. Uh, and, and you have that kind of changing of the guard thing that happens in San Antonio, which is, you know, after DeRozan left, like we don't really know. They're still figuring out who's alpha male. Who's, oh, I think the name is very clear at this it, point. It, fair. And, I, and, I, and it's Jakob Pertle. And, and I'm wondering <laughs> if the Pertle, the turtle, he fits He fits what Pop needs him to be, right? Yeah. Um, I mean... For anybody who does it, obviously it's DeJounte Murray. It's, yeah. Yes. Uh, I feel as though what, what you're looking at now is is just a team who's got, they got to play either what, the T-Wolves? Mm -hmm. uh, well, they got to play the Pelicans first. They play Pelicans first. So are you confident in them beating the Pelicans? I feel as though they beat the Pelicans. I feel like system one game. This is the thing about Pop. One off games, I lean into pop. I feel okay. like that like No, you I, can, I get it. I understand it. I give him I give him the pass. Even if Zion comes back with my a little hint of things to come. Uh <laughs> I feel as though they get past the Pelicans. Uh you got McCollum still figuring out a system there entirely. Anyway, it, it I feel confident in Pop's there. If you get past that, you've got to figure out either the T Wolves. Yeah. Which Sounds difficult because you've got another bunch of youthful guys coming for it yeah. and they really want that you get, you know, teeth fangs out, so to speak, or you're sitting there and you're like, okay, well, do, do you, do you think he can handle the Clippers, the big boys who yeah. have been, you know, like these guys have been around the block. I still, you know, and I know you and I might disagree about this, but I still think that uh, I see San Antonio getting to an actual playoff berth. I think them wow. getting to the first round. Door will slam shut after the first round, but I, I just feel like Pop, you give them, they got to win three games, right? Yeah. 
got to go three and oh. I, I, I just I just feel like a co- I'm a coach myself. I feel as though he can get that done. We'll okay. see what happens. All right. Fair enough. So the other side of this, the Lakers oh. missing out on any form of a postseason. Oh. I guess my question is, do you view this as as just kind of like a, a lost season? There were a mm. lot of things that went wrong. Um, or is is this looking at a kind of maybe det- very detrimental moment for the franchise and this team? Like what, I mean, in the off season, are you expecting big moves? Like what? It, it's, it's the big, this is going to be on every commentary show for the next like four months. Right. Well, look, okay. The Lakers always are right. Yes, it, you exactly. get the Lakers, this the Knicks. Is, like, this, is a, this is the saga we go with. And, and it's interesting because it could be a loss like this. You're not getting, not reaching potential. Yeah. Some teams galvanize, right? Some teams come together and be like, okay, guys, something happened here. Let's forget about the season. Let's come together. Rucker Park every day. Let's get our, <laughs> let's get our act together. We're coming back. We're winning next year. You got five Hall of Famers sitting next to each other. You'd think like they could just go play poker for a couple of days and be like, you know what? Let's run this back. Yeah. Let's, let's, show, let's show all the haters wrong. I don't see that happening. I think that this is the the real five alarm, five car fire alarm that's happening. I, I feel as though the team will not look the same next year. You're going to have a new coach clearly, but past that, I think that you've got to find a different combination of people. And and as we be talking about, like you've got contracts that you can't move. So yeah. if the only things that change are the role players around you. Even if the main pieces have to come back, right? I've got AD, I've got LeBron, and they can't move Westbrook because they don't want to give up that first round as, as the big deal. Even if I'm sitting there with all those three pieces and I'm trying to rotate some new role players in and to find somebody, okay. I think what what really the alarm bells that go off is the spirit. I think that this this can be something that galvanizes you or, or makes you kind of downside of your career. Yeah, I think you're looking at two or three, four players that, Sorry, that that was the high water mark was the bubble. And we are going to keep sliding down. Even if they win a, two or three games more next year, I don't think that they re- recover from this. I think that this is something that really is like a death knell for this iteration of this team. Interesting. Yeah, it's. I mean, big moves are going to be hard to make. Yeah. Uh, they they cleared a lot of the cupboard to put, you know, AD in a Lakers jersey, which they got a championship out of it. So there's not much that I can say about that, right? But um, for me, it's it's almost like the the bigger question before you can even get to the roster, or perhaps it was the issue with this roster. So if you are bringing the majority of it back, it's more of a, a spiritual thing that they yeah. have to answer this off season. And for me, obviously there are a lot of factors, right? Like it's not all Vogel. It's not all Westbrook. It's not all AD missing time. I think it's a little bit of everything, but even with that, I feel like I never really saw an identity with the Lakers this year. Yeah. And that can be extremely detrimental to a team. And so I think at some point, whether it's going to be a roster reconstruction or bringing it back, there needs to be an identity kind of pinpointed yeah. going into next season, right? And and because the couple years before that, the identity was, look, we're, we're defensively going to make things very difficult for you. We're going to, we're going to be pests on, on defense. Yeah. And then... As a result of that, we're going to get out and run. Yeah. And they weren't, they, they never established that this season. And part of that is personnel. Part of that, it's, you know, it's a little bit of everything, yeah. but whatever they have, they need to establish who they are spiritually as a team. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I truly believe it, that that can cure some things, you know? I, I think that's a hundred, I mean, exactly what you're saying. It rings true to me too. And, and you lose someone like Caruso who seems almost like a bit bit player, you know, who yeah. seems on the periphery of things. But when you're talking about like the dynamics of a team, the chemistry of a team, what their identity is, what their spiritual identity is. Well, if you lose the guy who works hardest on your team for all the loose stuff, for all the mm-hmm. intangibles, you lose that. That, that means the team yeah. is no longer focusing on like all the intangibles. Oh, someone else will take care of that. Pass the buck along. I'm with you. I think this season will come down to really showing how splintered that group is. Mm. And and I don't know that you can put the pieces back together. 
Okay. It's going to be uh, interesting, very headline-filled uh, off-season. We will season. follow every step of the way, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This next one uh, is going to ring true to you or very close to home. You're, you're a huge Bulls fan. Huge Bulls fan. Huge Bulls fan. Yeah. So uh, I'm glad that we got the excitement out there because it's, it's kind of a bummer headline here. And, <laughs> and the Bulls have officially rolled out Lonzo Ball for the rest of the season and the playoffs. As a Bulls fan, look, the season as a whole – you know, I, I think expectations were high, but not that high. For me, there was a point in the season where I looked at him and said, oh, we, we might have another contender in the East here. Yeah. And then the last third has, has been rough for yep. them. Yep. So heading into the playoffs, which they just clinched a playoff spot. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, the, pause there. Yeah. It has been many years since I Four? have. have yeah. It feels like a four plus you do the co- the the pandemic thing, sure, right? Sure. Time is a, it feels like it's been decades since they've been in the playoffs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Totally fair. But we got to go in without Lonzo. What does that mean? How how much is this hurting the the chances in the playoffs? And and you know what do you what's your expectation of this team in the playoffs? Yeah, I, I feel like at some point. With the team fully firing on all cylinders, Lonzo's in. We're moving the ball around. You're getting Levine is is becoming this force of nature. Yeah, DeRozan getting to come out and say like, "Hey, he's getting the credit he wasn't getting in San Antonio." You guys were just weren't watching the small yeah. market games. Like, what's going on, right? So, uh, there was that feeling that I had too. That not I, I never felt like you can win everything, but I thought like, okay, you could you could sneak your way into the into the Eastern conference championship you could Mm -hmm. that's out the window right and and i think once you just recognize lonzo i don't like him as a player even and i've learned to love him like the way that he sees the 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 ball moving around the court the way he can quarterback a game calm situations down change tempos uh, you just lose the control over the you know we're down two up three areas of the game and i think in the playoffs those become up two down eight really quickly sure right and so you got to put the skids on having this high 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 hopes but what i do think it allows you to do because he'll be back next year he's mm-hmm. gonna be all right it's not a, a you know career ending injury yeah i think what you do is you see this as sort of you know the bucks three years ago four years ago sort of ramping up saying like hey we're here and, and this is legit so if you can make some noise, that's really I want I want Benny the Bull. I want I want the madhouse <laughs> to go crazy. What I'm looking for is genuinely to, to create some cultural sort of cachet where people are like, oh, the Bulls are for real again. Right. Because once you start thinking that the Bulls are for real again in, in public, the Bulls start thinking they're for real again even more. So get get me past the first round. OK, get me deeper into a second round series, you know, make it a, a six game uh, series in the second round. Yeah. And what you do for yourselves is, is cor- corroborate like this works, right? We're doing something right. Mm-hmm. And also as as bit players become available, you know, you need a, a you trade out a three-point shooter for here and maybe you need a little defensive specialist that comes in. You create this the market for people to go like, okay, you guys could make a run next year. And and it it, it is and it it's not for nothing. You know, Lonzo's out, but you're still playing for we have the ability to put something together in the next couple of years. So okay. it's there. Yeah. Let me ask you this real quickly. You're talking because obviously you've got the Levine contract this this summer to figure out. Um, you know, Demar Derozan. He you you have him for a couple of years now, right? It's yeah, three. He's under three year yep. deal. And some of these other guys, you have some locked up there. In terms of like contending or mm. or getting closer to the top of that mountain, do you think it comes down to you know? improvements on the margins in terms of role players or do you think that you might be missing a superstar like like look yeah. Levine is great yeah the Rosen great like he was playing his way into the MVP you know race this season and I love DeMar DeRozan he's one of my favorite players in the league I don't view him as a superstar necessarily so would a superstar or a little more depth do more for your team I- I'm gonna go this way I'm hoping the league is shifting a little bit, mm-hmm. right? Um, from the big three, uh, I'm interested to see what happens with the Suns this year. And I think that's the template. You're not going to get a superstar kind of in there and, and jam your way in there right now. I just, with the contracts that they have, Levine's making a ton of money now. I just don't see them able to to, to sign the huge star. Yeah. 
But if you take the template of the Suns, which is we're a team, you know, and Chris Paul, I guess, is a superstar, but he's also, you know, DeMar. He's an aging superstar. Yeah. yeah. I take DeMar over over Chris Paul right now. Different players, different positions, different yeah. kind of ideas. But I'm just saying in terms of, of dynamicism, like I, I'm good with DeMar. I think, honestly, if you can find, you know, even if it was like you're getting Buddy healed in or something like that, right? And, and Specialists. A, a guy who comes in and says, like, I know my role and I will knock this thing out of the park every time that I'm here. I think I don't know that you win a championship and that's fair. OK, but I think that you go Eastern Conference championship. I think maybe like the Suns, right? You get to get to the finals and you see how far you can push it. And maybe that's got to be enough for right now. You don't need to win everything. But I don't think that you in the next three to four years, I don't think you have the window to get that big star. So in lieu of that, build your, your team that's solid at every position too deep. OK, you know, and, yeah. and really see what you can do. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Last one here I put in here. This is just a fun one. Hmm. I just, I, I giggled to myself when I saw <laughs> this one. Uh, and Zion Williamson's stepfather in a radio interview said that he expects to see Zion suit up and play That's this right. year. Like the, the, there's, I, I laugh because there were so many thoughts that came to my head, but like the one that really sticks out, I, I mean, obviously we're dealing with the, he's ready. He's not ready. He's ready. He's not ready. He's yeah, in Portland. Yeah. He's in New Orleans. <laughs> Every the the saga that has been Zion this, this voodoo season. magic being rubbed on his foot. Yeah. yeah, it's the stepfather is what gets me. Like, is there anything more stepdad than like, oh, I'm expecting him to play this year? Like, you know, obviously that wasn't his tone, but it just as I read it, I was like, that is the most stepdad thing you could go on the radio and yeah, say. Yeah, I mean, he's got that insider information. Like, what do you know <laughs> that all of the publicists for his professional basketball team do not know yeah. already? You know. Uh, and I don't know their relationship, right? Like, I don't know Zion's relationship with his stepfather, but I just love imagining that he's just yeah, kind of like, yeah. you know, shut up, Ron, or whatever yeah, his like stepdad's yeah, yeah. name is. Like, just like, you're not, you don't know, you don't you don't know, know what's yeah. going on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, I mean, it harkens back to, you know, uh, Mr. Ball, uh, it harkens back to, I always love Shaq's stepdad in the wings was always just this like big figure in his life that he would talk about, you know, and yeah. just sitting there like arms folded, like, okay, go ahead, Shaquille. You know, uh, the, the way that these family members have some sort of like, so, like soothsaying, they know, like they can read the tea leaves that are yeah, coming yeah. in because we well, eats dinner at my house. So I know what's going on, you know? <laughs> uh, and also like the, you know, the local market radio stations getting to have that. I love it. it yeah. It's such a great idea. I will say, if he's right, if he knows something that we don't know, Zion even playing four minutes of basketball this year will be some of the most exciting four minutes of basketball we of the need entire it. season. We need it. He's we, we I feel like most people have forgotten how absolutely fun it is to watch Zion play basketball. It is like watching a volcano try to play basketball. It, it is yeah. like a human and it's good at it. Human <laughs> to, to, I'm going to destroy anything that is around me. Uh, I want him to break, uh, you know, get him on the court, have him break a rim, just one dunk, tear the rim down and be like, call it a season. We're good. You yeah. know, uh, it, it'll be interesting to see if he gets out on the court. I do. I, I hope his stepdad is right. Yeah. You know, I, I love that the like NBA family market is really growing because yeah. like, you know, you, we, we've had the dads saying stuff. Um, I feel like in the last five to 10 years, moms have entered the market a little yep, bit. Yep. Uh, they're the really active ones on Twitter, which yeah, is hilarious yeah. to me. <laughs> and then now we've got uncles entering the equation. We've got stepdads, stepdads. on the market. Yeah. We're, we're really, the, this is a, a growing, expanding field. It's gonna be interesting as children uh, are better at, at sort of uh, all the Twitters, all the social media stuff yeah. than their parents. Start getting some information from, you know, Bronny's going to tell us about what's going on with LeBron from yeah, now yeah, on, yeah. you know, like the younger generation being like, oh, look at this guy. He's in the hyperbaric chamber. You guys all know he'll be back there tomorrow. So, you, you know, when like they've been grounded because yeah, they're like yeah. washed, yeah. like a picture of their dad washed, <laughs> go wa wash, go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's take a trip. Uh oh. To the altar of the basketball gods. You oh, can, yeah, okay. You can hear the bells softly in the background ringing. That means it is time for service. <laughs> it is the only altar that I will kneel at. And we are going to ask the basketball gods for something. Okay. So, I can go first if you like. I know that the, uh, the basketball gods can be an intimidating bunch, to say the least. <laughs> That's very true. 
I, for maybe the second service in a row, am trying to appeal to the vindictive side of the basketball gods, because <laughs> as we know, they're not necessarily the kindest group of people. They're not. Very ornery. Very uh, ornery very, yeah. group. Very ornery, uh, omnipotent. Cynical, uh, even. Yeah. 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 But you kind of love it. Yeah. It, like, it's both fear and respect all at the same <laughs> time. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm appealing to that side again, because I still think it is my best chance here. And as the season, the regular season comes to a close, I'm looking at the Eastern Conference, and I'm seeing some stuff in the Eastern Conference standings. Mm -hmm. that is getting me a little excited, okay? Okay, okay particularly in the two, three, four spots of the seating. So you've got Boston, Milwaukee, Philly, all jockeying for position. Yep. And it's it, one, I love it because we're actually seeing these teams compete in the last week of the season, which is, which is a rarity. Yeah, things, things actually matter. Right yes. Now. Yeah. But those spots in particular combined with the play in is what I'm asking for here. So number one, I want the nets to win their play-in series. I want them in the seven seed. Yep. I want the Nets in seven. Because then the real big ask here <laughs> is I want Boston to hold on to that two seed. Okay. And after that, I want Philly to pass the Bucks and take the three seed. Okay. Nothing against the Bucks, nothing at all against them. But I'm looking for, we're going in the postseason. <laughs> We're on TNT now. I want yeah. that TNT drama. Yeah. And if this plays out the way I'm asking for it, you've got Kyrie and Boston mm -hmm. in round one. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I, oh, <laughs> I, oh that, I love that. That would be such a fun series. And four games that he'd have to play exactly. in Boston. Exactly. Yeah. Potentially, yeah. right? Yeah. And then if the Nets get past Boston, then you've got mm -hmm. James Harden in Brooklyn and Ben Simmons in Philly. Yeah. And what a juicy, just fan experience. See, like, that's what I want. Yep. And I, I think they'd be fun games. <laughs> they would be, they would be fun. I but don't know I want that I'd the go drama. to the stadium. I think I might stay away from the stadium, <laughs> but they will be fun, yes. That's what I'm asking for. Give me the Eastern Conference drama. The only other matchup that I would want to see for the same thing. Yeah. Is I want to see your Bulls yeah. and the Bucks face each other oh. in a series because you got the Grayson Allen versus the uh, everybody, yeah, yeah. the goons, <laughs> yeah. the goons in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, uh, it would. It has been all those games since the Caruso injury. And Clayton, I know that Grayson Allen is your favorite player. I'm sorry for saying this, but <laughs> it is. They have been feisty games, and that would be such a fun environment. It really would be. And, and I mean, you're what an airplane, the paper airplane away from right one there. another there yeah. you know you've got you've got geographic bad blood i would love to see that as well and i also think just for the development of my bulls <laughs> to go up against you know reigning champs and to get schooled a little bit is what you need you know you need a little bit of uh uh humbling i think it okay. sets, sets forth a good path and it will be chippy to say the least yeah. right so i i i hope the, the basketball gods come through for you because i feel as though uh all of those are uh in the interest, not just of, of you, but of all basketball fans across this great Look, nation, right? I feel like Adam Silver, he's like the the Lucifer of the basketball gods. Yes. At times, I feel like he was cast down from the basketball. <laughs> he was kicked out of the kingdom yeah. of the basketball <laughs> gods. So he might have some pull there. And yeah, the it would be so good for the league for any of these matchups. Yeah, to just great narratives. Uh, yeah. You know, any one of these that could that could happen. It really, really exciting. Um, so what do you I, I have an ask okay. as well. Great. Uh, you went East Coast, so I, I was thinking about the West Coast, which there's not as much drama in, in the job. Now that the Lakers are out, cool. And it's kind of, you know, the positions are sort of there. The playing teams don't feel like they're going to make a whole lot of noise, as we talked about earlier. So mm -hmm. there might be a... Um... The T-Wolves could, the T-Wolves, I think, could do a little bit of, of something. And mm -hmm. I know you love your Clippers. Uh, I don't see them as a playing team. That's the problem. I see them as as... A playoff, it's almost like a loss for them that they're even in the, the in the play-in. But, but if, I if, think it's an accomplishment considering the season they had. If Kawhi shows up, yeah, we've we got, got some we got excitement there. a five-second clip of him walking in a gym. It, it, That's enough for me. All, all, all possibilities are there for that team. You know, you, don't, you, don't, you can't bet against Kawhi in any situation. So yeah. him just being on, on his feet, being in the arena, cool. 
But I have an ask that uh, that I think would sort of I don't want an asterisk on on any of the season. Uh, I I want this to be a clean win for whoever wins everywhere. So my ask isn't a specific team, but it's also for everybody. Okay. Um, I would like the basketball gods, uh, wherever they may roam, to grant the Golden State Warriors a clean bill of health through the entire playoffs. And I do recognize that every season is is hampered, marred with different injuries that happen here or there, pulled growing changes than entire trajectory of a series here and there. I got it. Golden State finally has, at least in the vicinity of all their players being, their, their main key players being healthy. Clay's been playing decent. He's out there moving the ball around, taking good shots. When Draymond was playing, he was leading, doing a good job. Steph had, you know, almost an MVP season before. He kind of derailed a little bit. Um, MVP vicinity, we'll say. Uh, yeah, it's very peripheral. But it would be really exciting for them to have. It's a new look for them, too, when they're all on. They, they haven't all played together for very much. And they've got young guys that are on this team that are learning how to play with them. Jordan Poole's playing great. You know, uh, Wiseman, I wish, was there doing his thing, you know. Yeah. But I think it would be a more exciting playoffs for me, even if they go out. doesn't mean they have to win. I, I just want them. I, I do think they're a top three team in the NBA if they're all healthy and they could all play together. Just based off of experience, based off of coaching, based off of schemes that they run, uh, and that they can be down 22 points at any time and still win a game. Like, they, there's no – you can't – you can't ever count them out to a certain extent, except if Steph's not playing in this playoffs because he's he's hampered or hurt, he's got it twisted, whatever. Except if Draymond can't get out there full steam yeah. and he's not that, then it doesn't really even matter. I don't really even care to watch a Golden State game because it's not going to be uh, them at full strength. So my hope is that we get a full strength Golden State Warriors. And we get to see them maybe not win everything, but sort of have a... Uh, a return, a resurgence. Uh, there was a point in this season where I thought they were going to win everything. Just early, like Clay's coming back and then it's going to boom, hit. Yeah. Didn't quite happen that way. So I just want to see that be a team that doesn't go out uh, on on injury terms, goes out on their own terms, you know? Okay. Interesting. It's a very controversial ask for a couple of reasons. One, <laughs> we just saw them have a, a dynastic run in the NBA. It's true. Not that long Sorry, ago. Sorry. Well, yes, yes. Fair. And, and two... With everything that I said about the basketball gods, you might have just put them in a very <laughs> precarious position. Um, so if there are any Warriors fans watching, remember, Alfred Brown the fourth is the one that asked for this. I have faded them to at least two more Achilles tears. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, OK, I appreciate the uh, kind heartedness of your ask. I yeah, like it. It. Was well, a, it was a warm, kind hearted ask. Yeah. Well, we, we've we've now put them in a position The gods. To pick a side. Pick a side. Yeah. Pick, <laughs> it's Lakers time for them. Pick an identity. Pick an identity. I love it. All right. So <laughs> let's have some fun here. Great. And we're going to get into three pack. Great. Three pack is a, uh, a trivia segment that we have here. It's a based off an old bar game, two truths and a lie, mm -hmm. uh, where I will present three facts to you. One of them will be a lie and you will have to sniff them out. Whew. Very hearty woo. I appreciate the excitement because I think you're going to be particularly excited about this week's three pack. Oh okay. I know you're a Bulls fan. I am. Oh, man. This is going to be tough. And you had mentioned earlier, maybe one of the iconic Bulls of all time. This is a Benny the Bull three pack. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. So Benjamin T. Benny Bull yes. is his full name, was created in 1969 by the team's GM, Pat Williams, at the time to help generate ticket sales, which were plummeting only a few years in to a brand new franchise. Mm -hmm. It worked. People fell in love with him immediately. <laughs> he is one of the most well-known and rambunctious mascots in all of professional sports. That's right, Gritty. Take that. Uh -huh. that, is all, that is all true. Okay. Now, I'm going to present... Three little little tidbits for you. Okay. And you got to find the fib. All right. <clears throat> Thinking cap is on. Let's see it. Tidbit one. Okay. In 2003, on the 10-year anniversary of Michael Jordan's first retirement, Benny the Bull was retired, and Benny's high-flying dunking cousin, the Bull, was introduced. He's a little angrier than Benny. 
uh, but it is his family member. As a result of the retirement, Benny the Bull became eligible and was inducted into the Hall of Fame as a mascot, as the first and only mascot to do so. The only mascot in the NBA Hall of Fame. The team then reinstated him as a mascot the following season with an I'm back announcement, mirroring Jordan's retirement. Fact number two. Tidbit one. God, I got I to gotta process that. That is a, a juicy tidbit. Okay. Tidbit two. Okay. Benny's cousin, the bull that we just talked about, mm-hmm. <laughs> was very short lived as Chester Brewster, the man behind the mask, was arrested and charged when he was found with six ounces of weed and a scale in 2004, thus ending a very brief run of two mascots during their games. Because when they brought Benny back, the bull and Benny ran together. Okay, tidbit three. Tidbit three. We all saw the hilariously staged moment this season (laughs) where Benny the bull was escorted out by security as the son's Devin Booker was shooting free throws a knock at Booker's run in with the infamous Raptor Mm -hmm. at the free throw line. But, but Benny was actually ejected and escorted out of a game in 1974 during game three of the Eastern conference finals against the bucks head coach, Dick Mata was ejected for throwing his coat at a ref furious about a missed offensive foul by Kareem Abdul Jabbar. When the coach was ejected, this set Benny off and he ran onto the court, cursing at the official, uh, uh, making obscene gestures toward him to the point where Milwaukee security had to escort Benny off the court and out of the building. Wow. In all three instances, Benny is is quite he's a badass, a rabble rouser, right? We know uh, him for the popcorn antics, but this man is this really man, gone. It, it, he, the, he, the madhouse is uh, affecting his mind. Uh, all right. So, tidbit one on retirement. Yes. And then reinstatement. <clears throat> man, I should know that if that's true. I'm saying that's true. Okay. That seems like something in 2003 that they would have need to have done in order to keep a little bit of excitement going on in yeah. in the arena um which means if number 1 is true it would suggest that number 2 is true okay because they would have run together briefly on there and not come out except that i know in my heart that number 3 is true okay so i'm going to go with one is true Three is also true. Okay. Two, there's a ver- there's a version of truth that's in there, but it's not quite exactly okay. how it was presented. It's not, there was no weed or charge or something like that. There's something, they, they got rid of him for a different reason. Okay, so the, the fib is that uh, the, the man that played double yeah. was arrested with ounces of marijuana and a scale. Uh, you got it wrong. Oh! Fact number one is the fib. Oh, Uh, there was no retirement. Benny the Bull has never been retired. Oh my gosh. He is in the Hall of Fame, but there are other mascots in the Hall of Fame as well. So there were several lives in here. I did not know that, like, I did not know how sneaky you would be because you set the rule, thus letting him be inducted into the Hall Mm -hmm. of Fame. That's what got me. Damn so it. That's a requirement for players, not mascots. Got it. So uh really the, the jazz bear is in there. Um I'm trying to remember who else uh is the is the uh, gorilla? I from think the gorilla, gorilla is in there. Um yeah, like the, the iconic ones are all in the Hall of Fame. Uh and and the wow. bull was introduced in the 90s. The bull was around back then. Okay. Uh but he was arrested in 2004. Really? Yeah. And that that is number two is true. That, that basically oh yeah, ended and that the bull. wiped out. His and so there's there's other versions of of Benny's family members. There's like a mini Benny, mini and, Benny. And I've seen that. Yeah. So yeah. there's a couple other ones out there, but uh, yeah, it is true. I I will. Can I add one more tidbit to this that uh, I will hope that people go look okay. uh, up and buy and purchase. And it's my favorite shirt that I, I should have worn it today. <laughs> uh, Benny has been replaced by on my favorite shirt. Uh, Picasso's bull from mm. Guernica. Have you seen this shirt before? Yes, yes. 
If you do not own it, you should own it. Uh, I own it both in black and white. It says uh, Picasso Bowls. Uh, it is my favorite. If you are into things creative and you're into sports, somehow they, the minds melded on that one. I bought one for myself and a close friend of mine who knows how much I love the Bulls sent one for me uh, like the same oh, week that it came out. Uh, so you get a sleeveless one now. That's it's my favorite <laughs> Benny of the Bull, Benny the Bull variation. Uh, and I'm glad that he's in the Hall of Fame. That makes me... He is in the Hall of Fame, yeah. That makes me feel much better about uh, life. I'm, I'm pissed that I, I got that. You know, it was a good good switcheroo on that one. Um, yeah, I've gotten very good at very this. Very good. Um, I will say there is a gray for anybody who's going to look it up. His ejection in the 1974 playoffs, there's a picture of Benny the Bull being ejected out of the game, being escorted out by security, and it's an incredible photo. I've seen the photo. I know that that one is true. Okay. I've seen that before, and I, it's part of the reason why I like him so much. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. All right. So... Last segment here. Dun, dun, dun. It's time for bet brains. Oh boy. We're going to take a trip to the casino of Clayton here. Before we put any money down, we got a recap from our last visit at the casino of Clayton. So we had bulls at calves and the bet was Evan Mobley over one and a half blocks in that game. Plus 200 odds. We liked it. We put $75 mm. down on it and Mobley had exactly Zero blocks in that game. So we <laughs> lost $75 in that bet. It's okay. How, and, how is he panning out on the, the rookie of the year? Race um, he was doing well, but Scotty Barnes is making some people sweat right yeah. now. So I then, like Mobley. He's a, he's a player. I love Mobley. He's a player. Love him. Yeah. Then we had the Wolves weekend games, which was versus Dallas and then at Boston. Over 31 and a half three-pointers made with plus 300 odds. We put 50 bucks on it. And we lost. The Wolves combined both games for 25 three-pointers made. So, but hey, pretty, pretty close. Close but no cigar. Yeah. Close doesn't really count in it casinos. It does not count in the bet. You, yeah, you can yeah. try in your cash out, but it's not going to work out well. And then the last one was a fun little pick em here. It was Kings at Magic. One team. We had to pick the team that was going to get to 10 turnovers first. The Kings had plus 250 odds. The Magic had plus 150 odds. Did you watch this game? I did not yeah. uh, happen to watch a uh, King's Magic matchup <laughs> at the end of the season where nothing is mattering. But Well, I did because I'm a pure sicko. There you go. Uh, and I love this stuff. <laughs> we picked the Kings. I, I really researched this one. I looked at first half turnovers <laughs> versus second half turnovers. I looked at their turnovers oh, per man. quarter. I looked Dug at deep. every single quarter. Everything pointed to Kings and it had the better odds. So why not? <laughs> we put 50 bucks on it. And we won with a minute and 32 Woo! seconds left in the third quarter. That's right. Davion Mitchell, who is, by the way, if, if you're watching this and you don't watch the Kings, watch <laughs> Davion Mitchell. That kid is incredible. Yeah. Threw an errant pass that was stolen. And that errant pass won us $125. Big ones. I love it. Yes. So Take it to the house. I love it. So that actually... It made up for the uh, money lost in the first two bets. So we're back to even, but I still have a pile of money from the parlay that I won a few weeks ago. So I'm going to give you the bank account this week. Here we are. We have some, some lines here on the weekend games. There are two rules at the casino of Clayton. Okay. Three rules. One, you do not talk about the casino of Clayton. <laughs> okay. Two, you have to put a bet on every single line. And three, you have to spend a minimum of $100 at the casino. Okay. So bed number one, you've got Golden State, Saturday at San Antonio, and Sunday at New Orleans. The Warriors have more three-pointers made than their opponent in both games, plus 180 odds. What do you want to put on this? Uh, I feel good, not great about this. Good, not great. Uh, I'm seeing, you know, we don't have Steph in the lineup, but you still got a lot. Of, you got Jordan Poole's hitting threes yep. right now. You've got Clay out there and taking shots. Uh, and I think you're you're getting two teams who are, you know, going to be focused on trying to, you know, pad their 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 ability to to go far into the the play in tournament. Right? They're playing yep. for something. It's not for nothing. But I think you're going to have Golden State feeling loose, right? They're in. They know we're in the playoffs already. Don't need to worry about this playing tournament. Uh, I'm giving you 60 bucks. I'm thinking, 60 bucks. I'm thinking, I'm thinking 60 40 here, right? Like okay. 60 40 chances. I'm going to put $60 on the, on the bet. Okay. And first time a $60 bet has ever been made in Bet Brand. So I love it. Yeah, I'm a weird guy. 
I pre- and that's why you're on the alt. Thank you. That's what Thank makes you. you an alt. Okay. <laughs> Next one here. Clipper home back to back. These are the last two games mm. of the Clippers season. And it's Saturday versus Sacramento, Sunday versus Oklahoma. Two extremely formidable opponents here. <laughs> the Clippers have to out rebound both teams. Plus 200 odds. Yeah, Mr. Clipper. How are they do on rebounds this year? How Not great, doing? Bob. Not great. Uh, doesn't feel like a big winner here. Uh, that, uh, it doesn't feel to me like this is going to happen. But I will say they are playing the Kings and they are playing the Thunder. There's a chance, you know. More opportunities for missed shots, more opportunities for rebounds. There, And you've got not huge bodies in there. Oklahoma missing... Uh, my favorite player in the league, which no one here knows, Lou Dort. Just oh, you understand? Just did you see the episode when I put I the like, recreated the logo? Yeah, he, I love Lou Dort. He is. It, he will be my favorite non Hall of Famer, maybe of all time, if he continues his uh, career. Uh, but I'm not giving you a whole lot of chances. Still, that's, that's uh, fine. I'm, I'm giving forty dollars to this. Okay, bet. all right, forty dollars. Forty dollars yep. on it. I like it. I like it. Yep. Last one here. Yeah. And before we get into this, I say this every time, Clayton, stop picking on the magic. It's getting, it's getting out of hand. You just look like a bully now. All right. I I believe that you have now been banned for life from, from Disney world. The city of Orlando uh, has you as marked as enemy. Number one, I gotta be honest. You're, you're making that rank in my heart too, because you keep picking on the magic. You're on DeSantis's hit list over there. But I do actually kind of like this one because it is it is a little favorable for the Magic. So Miami at Orlando mm-hmm. on Sunday, the Magic hold the heat to under 102 and a half points plus 220 odds. This is a juicy one. It's a juicy one because you've got Orlando seemingly playing for nothing. Yeah. But I don't think that's true. We were sleeping giants, right? Sleeping giants. And, and the real question you have to ask yourself, and I ask myself all the time is, do you believe in magic? Do you believe in magic? Uh, it's been a long time since Anthony Hardaway uh, strode up and down Scotty Skiles. Um, but I do think, I mean, they have a great team. Yes. And I do think they'll actually be out there playing because you, you want to swan song yourself off into Cancun with, with some sort of good feel, yeah. you know? And if you're playing cross town, cross state rivals, mm-hmm. you get up for the game. Conversely, Miami... They're in the playoffs. They're good. They don't really need to care too much about things. Yeah? I mean, they're they're two games ahead of Boston with the one seed. By Sunday, it will be decided they will whether know. or not they're safe or no. I, I feel as though Jimmy Buckets may not even play this game. Mm, already fishing on the pond, huh? Already just get you know, he's getting some... Big head coffee? Yeah, exactly. Big head <laughs> coffee. He's getting treatment. Uh, him and, and Rachel Nichols are out there uh, eating dinner somewhere. <laughs> wow. Uh, I feel as though... I'm putting hundred bucks on this. I love it. I love it. Hundred. Yes. I feel confident. I mean, I, I get 102. To me, 102 points is a lot because uh, I don't play in the NBA. But I, I just feel like what, what's their average? 114. You said something, something like that. that. Yeah. Okay. I think they can pull that down. I think they 102.5. I think they'll they'll hold them to 102 points. You're skinning by uh, by the skin of your teeth. 0. 0.5. They will I get love that it. done. I'll take it anyway. 100, 100 bucks. I'll take it anyway. And I don't. It, this doesn't even Orlando doesn't have to score anything in this game. That, they just they, have to hold them down. 99 to 1 they win the bet. Look, I'm lo- I'm looking for 0 to 102. I don't give a shit. Okay. I love it. That is going to be the show. We will check back next week to see uh, uh the earnings on these bets. Uh thank you, Al, for My joining. Pleasure. We we when we Clayton and I were, you know, creating the show in our heads and talking about, you know, potentially what it could look like. Yeah. Uh, you were genuinely one of the first names that came up as somebody that we wanted to bring on as a guest. So I'm I, I'm so happy that we were able to make it happen. I am honored. I, I you know Clayton and I have been in the same uh, fantasy league for a very long time with a lot <laughs> of crap talk going on back and forth. He knows I got those deep cuts in there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I I'm a big student of the game, letting it uh, inflect my life. So it's an honor to have been here. I just, you know, he's got to do a better job of holding this chair down. Just... <laughs> yeah, he he lives a different lifestyle he than does the rest live of a us. Lifestyle. Um, before we let you go, and I will say, this will not be your only appearance on the alternates. The door is always open for you to come back. Where would you like to send the millions, billions, and Brazilians of <laughs> alternates? 
watchers and listeners, anything that you want to you want to kind of put out there. this camera, that camera, this camera. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, very, very uh, hot wings right now. Yeah, uh, no, I, I appreciate being here. Um, you know, I do stuff in the world. If you guys are interested, go check it out. Uh, Dangers is doing some cool shows this summer. Uh, we should be doing East Coast stuff. Playing new Friends Fest with Loma and I might be playing that as well. No I'll man, say that. Hell yes. Yeah. Uh it's gonna be a cool time up there. Um we will be putting out a new record soon. I am writing it currently in my brain as we speak. I've been writing it for a couple of years, but uh I'm gonna record that, which is exciting. So stay tuned for that. Um I'll be doing some more stuff on cultural materials very soon. Another photo book will be coming out. Um if you can check that out, culturalmaterials.com. Uh it's it's kind of a gonna be a catch-all for a lot of cultural materials in the world. Um, and last but not least, you know what I will plug is uh, the gym that I own. Yes. If you are in the Los Angeles area and you hate gyms, you should come down. Uh, if you're in the Los Angeles area and you love gyms, you should come down. <laughs> uh, it's it's more a work of art in my mind than a gym. Uh, there's a record store in the front, a bookstore in the front. And the workouts are much more just about... Um, feeling something to be quite honest it's the same way you you go to a show and you leave feeling like something happened that's uh, the whole objective of gay 14 so all of the people watching this or listening to this out there you're weirdos so uh gay14.net is the uh email for that or the address for that go check that out and pop in awesome love it love it love it i will be back on tuesday with another guest with us it's the last one before clayton gets back dun, dun, dun. Uh, until then remember to be kind to yourselves be kind to each other and we're going to leave you with drag blood by Kamadre off their 2012 self-titled lp on vitriol records picked by al himself to bring us out thank you so much we'll see you soon <laughs>